controlling Rhino through text prompts. Another amazing recent development, the use of MCP, built for model context protocol, which acts as a bridge between AI and Rhino. It allows the use of natural languages to guide Rhino and even Grasshopper and code to do the manual modeling for you. The workflow understands step-by-step -step modeling commands, accessing what is in the scene and managing other details such as colors, attributes, dimensions, and even the scripts. Although still at a basic level at the moment, this is a fascinating technology to keep an eye on. We'll be following this GitHub created by Josh, who based it on Blender MCP GitHub. Right here. I've done a previous video on this, so you can check that out too. Developer is actively updating this and goes beyond just integrating Rhino with MCP, also with Grasshopper, Python scripting, and AI image, which is very exciting. I will take you through the basics of this setup, and then from there you can build up on it. We go down, we can start with the prerequisites. You need Rhino, then you need Python 3.10 on newer. So you can get this from the official page over here and download it. Then you need Conda. So this is for managing your coding environment. Different projects usually need different versions of libraries and they conflict if you save them all in one place. So using Conda, you can separate out these versions for each project, which makes it nice and easy to use. This can be downloaded from anaconda.com and you can get a free light version called Miniconda from here. Here there's also an option for a replicate API token, but this is only needed for the extra steps for the image generation. So for the setup, I recommend first going to the top and downloading the main Rhino MCP folder. For this, you can either hit clone or you can download the zip and paste it somewhere like your documents. I have the Rhino MCP folder saved here on my D drive. And you will need a command terminal. I will be using VS Code. The easy way just to open up that folder is to go File, Open Folder. And it'll select it from there. It has a built in tail at the bottom here, but if you don't see it, you can go to the top, Terminal, New Terminal. And you see that the path, it goes to the Rhino MCP folder. Back in the GitHub, we need to use these commands. The first is to create the Conda environment. You copy this, paste, and hit enter. Hit Y when prompted. And now it's set up the environment. So we will need to activate it. So here you can see the command is Conda activate Rhino MCP which is exactly the same as the GitHub. Enter. And now here in the brackets, you can see Rhino MCP, which shows that we're in that environment that we set up. As an extra tip, if you go to the folder where Anaconda was installed, it might vary on your machine. But if you go to Miniconda and environment, you can see that we have the environment Rhino MCP, which we set up, which is over here. So when we install the libraries, will be directly stored in this one. We'll be needing this step for later on anyway. Next, we need to install UV, which is a package manager. And the last step that we need to do here, we go over and install this. We don't need to CD into the Rhino MCP folder, as we are already there. Next, you need to install the Rhino side script. So open up Rhino 7 or 8, and you will need to run the Python script that came with the downloaded folder. See here, there's a file called Rhino script. Activate this. Go up to tools, script, run, and find that Rhino script. You see then up here, that it says that it is running the server. Next, you need to activate the MCP server. For this, you need Claude Desktop. Install the Claude Desktop app on the main website, over here. Now, once you have Claude Desktop open, go to the top left, File, 
settings, developer, and edit config. This will bring you the config file here. You can open this in VS Code or just even Notepad. I can double click and open this, and it will simply look like this. Go back to the GitHub. You will see that you need to update it with this script. It runs this command when you access the server. Let's copy and paste. At the bottom here, it says that you need to change the Python path to be the one in your Conda environment. Remember previously where I showed you the Conda environment saved? That's the path that you need. So in my case, it's over here in Mini Conda 3 environments, I know MCP. And you can find Python app over here. So you need to copy this address, paste it in here. However, you have to note that forward slashes are required. I paste what I've copied across, it's the other way around. So it needs to be updated this way. So it looks something like this, and just add the Python at the end. And remove this. And save. It's a good idea to test if this command works first. Copy this path. Go back to Visual Studio Code. And also copy the argument. This part. It might show up on your terminal that there are Python modules missing. If so, not a problem. You just type conda install and then the name of the missing module. Here it says PIL is missing, which is short for the pillow module, which is for image support. Type conda install pillow and let that run. I'll then copy the command again with the path. Just run and test it. And then here, another missing module called requests is missing. So type conda install requests. Generally, if you have any missing module errors, it is simply resolved like this. And now when I enter the command again, it runs the server without errors. So I can just close this now. It's working, we just save it. Rhino right open in the script running here. Can we open the Claude desktop app? And now if you see here, there's a connection button, like this, and you can see Rhino MCP is working. Now we are ready to command Rhino. Simple commands work best. Let's start by using Claude to create names and layers for our document. To ask for permissions, so accept. And once it runs the script, you can see that we have name layers added correctly. You can go further and then add geometry and dimensions and sizes. Let's say you wanted to add some simple areas to get an understanding of sizes. You can prompt to make the sizes and add these to the matching layers. I will also ask to color them. And it has exactly done that with the areas matching the layers and sizes I asked for. So we can follow the simple commands. This works well for basic geometry too. You can ask for any shape or any dimension. But here is a simple cube. And now I want to array it in the x direction 10 times by 20 meters. And it's done that, no problem. You can then manipulate this further, adding colors to each object, or even adding to separate layers. But you get the idea. You have hundreds of these commands, and it is quicker for you to type in one sentence to summarize and get it done, and this is the way to go. I've also experimented with taking reference images, although this is much less successful at this point. I've tried creating a massing from this image of a house generated in ConfUI. It examines the image correctly and gives a good understanding of the elements. However, it is finding it difficult to understand the subtleties, the shapes, and all the recesses. However, it is roughly a similar shape. Complex commands and references are not really usable at this point. However, this will be very exciting as it develops to be a co-pilot for modeling. So try this out for yourself and even explore the further integrations with Grasshopper and image generation.